Om Gyanat Marandasya, Gyananjana Shalakaya, Chaksuran Militanyena, Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha. Vancha Kaupa Tarubhyascha, Kripa Sindhu Bhaivacha, Patitanam Pavane Bhyo, Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha. Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nichananda, Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Initially they told me you will get four minutes to speak. Now Prabhu is giving five minutes. Just see, everything is increasing in Mayapur. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> so, uh, I... I came to my I came to India in 1975. I joined the ISKCON Society in 1971 in the UK in London, and uh, I had gone to America. I wanted to get involved with the the Dallas Gurukul and help in teaching there, and I ended up in I, somehow I ended up in New York. And at that time, Gopal Krishna Maharaj was asked by Prabhupada to come to India and help in developing the Yatra in India. And as you heard this morning from, I think it was the Jananivas Prabhu was saying, Prabhupada said every center should give two men to Mayapur. So Gopal Krishna Maharaj was coming to India and he asked the temple president in New York, he said, can you give me two men? So I was one of them because I, I had a British passport, you see. And at that time, British people didn't need a visa to stay in India. So by bringing me to India, I could stay for a long time. And so I stayed for, I think I was here four, four years. And uh, I came initially to, I was in Delhi. I got sick, I got jaundice. I came, Gopal Krishna Maharaj brought me over to Calcutta said, it will be better for your health. He said, prasadam is a little better. <laughs> so I came to Calcutta and sometimes we would come out to Mayapur, of course, because we were in Calcutta and we were preaching there and we were telling people about Mayapur and even articles were coming in the newspaper that we were building a very big temple there in Mayapur. That was in 1975, 76, they were talking about building a big temple there. And so people would become a life member on the basis that we're going to build this big temple in Mayapur. So we're still waiting, gradually, it's coming together, just now coming, as we say. But certainly something wonderful will come. And Srila Prabhupada used to come every year to Mayapur. He would come to the Calcutta temple first for a day or two, then he'd go out to Mayapur. And many of us would follow him. It would be very interesting to go with Prabhupada. You know, there's a whole fleet of vehicles sometimes. Uh, Gargamuni, at that time he was a Swami, he had brought a fleet of Mercedes-Benz vehicles over to India to use for preaching. And we all went with Prabhupada. Prabhupada had his own ambassador car, which was maroon colored with a beautiful big chrome tilak on the front. So it was, it was very nice. And Prabhupada had a program coming out to Mayapur. Every, he would always stop halfway at the mango grove. There was a mango grove there and Prabhupada would stop there and take his breakfast every morning before coming out to Mayapur. You know, it would take a long time. It would take five, six hours to get out here to Mayapur from Calcutta. And so Prabhupada would stop halfway and take breakfast and then come out here to Mayapur. And I remember Prabhupada speaking, some of the different instructions he gave to the devotees as Janani Vas Prabhu was describing. Gorpunima festivals where it was all white faces, you know. I don't see too many white faces here today, you know, but <laughs> few, <laughs> not too many. Uh, of course, because the pandemic is on, so difficult for people from the West to come. But uh, 
in those days, we were all Westerners, and everything was really done by the Westerners, and the Pujaris were all Westerners. I did want to speak, uh, to, just to remember some of, because in the last two years, we had the tragedy of losing some of our very stalwart devotees, particularly His Holiness Bhakti Charu Swami Maharaj departed from us to go back to Mayapur in the spiritual world. And also, we lost also His Grace Pankaj Jangari Prabhu. And those two devotees really did so much. They did a lot, they, a major contribution to Mayapur preaching here in Mayapur, Pankajangari Prabhu in, with the Pujari department. And we also lost the Maharaji, Rama Devi Maharaji, who had come from the UK and she was serving in the Pujari department. And you can see her contribution when you go, you see the Astasakis, their evening dresses, they're very exquisite, very, very wonderful, very tastefully done. She designed everything herself. She was very ex expert in worshipping the deities. So, I think we really want to remember these days. I want, because I was asked to glorify people, and I thought the people I'd like to glorify the most were those people who have given their lives for the development of Mayapur. His Holiness Bhakti Charu Swami Maharaj, Pankajangari Prabhu, Rama Devi Maharaji, people like that. So very grateful to their contribution. And I remember Srila Prabhupada, of course, how much he wanted Mayapur to develop. He gave us a lot of instructions when he was here in Mayapur. I remember, for instance, saying to all of us at the Gorpunima festival, many devotees had come from the West, and Prabhupada would say, don't eat in the restaurants. You see, now you're all Vaishnavas. You put on the Kunti Mala, you put the Tilak on, now you are Vaishnava. You don't eat in the restaurant. It was a big shock to the, the devotees because they were coming from the West and they, they were thinking, I'm going to go to the restaurants, I want to try everything, all the dishes they offer in these Indian restaurants. But Prabhupada told them, no. You don't go to the restaurants. He didn't want us to eat in restaurants. He wanted us to take Krishna Prasada. So that was one instruction I remembered from Prabhupada here in the Gorpurnima festival. He was very concerned of all of us that we show the right achar, the right behavior. Right? There's prachar and achar. So preaching and then behavior. And both should be correct. Prabhupada wanted that we'd show the right behavior as devotees of the Lord. We're coming to this holy dham. It's a very great responsibility, very great blessing. I've been so fortunate. I've been here for two years now. Usually when I stayed in Calcutta in the 1970s, I would rarely come out to Mayapur. I really admired the people who did dedicate their life here, like my dear God brothers, Janani Vas Prabhu, and of course His Holiness Jaipataka Swami Maharaj, that they stayed out here in Mayapur. When we, when we was, used to come to Mayapur, there was only one shop at the gate here, one little tea hut. And sometimes the devotees would sneak out from the temple, buy tea biscuits from the tea shop. There was no other shops, there was none of these little bazaars, there was none of these dukans. It was, it was empty, it was very peaceful, very beautiful, and people really liked it. I know so many life members, I would get them, I talked to them about Mayapur, and when they did go out to Mayapur, they would, they would say, yeah, it's so wonderful, so nice. It's a little different now. As we heard, Jaipataka Swami say, Prabhupada wants a city. <laughs> city is different. More people, more people, more problems. <laughs> That's inevitable part. So, thank you all very much for being here. Thank you for giving me a few minutes to speak. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada Ki.